Hey y'all, my name is, I don't know why I clap. Sorry if that was really loud. Um, my name is Jessica Parada and I am a mom, motherhood and business coach who helps moms have ease of success in their life and business using their human design and their astrology and their cycle. So today I'm talking about how I coach my clients through a mindset block that is holding them back from their business. And this is a really common block, uh, having a mindset block around launching or creating a plan of action for your business or self-sabotaging. Let me know in the comments if you have had those type of blocks, right? They're really super common being into entrepreneurship. And what the example I'm gonna give you today is myself. I am going to show you how I coach myself through a block. And this is, there's a fine line between um, being messy, being you know, vulnerable in a way that's going to help others. So I didn't show up here or on social media saying, oh my God, I, I'm having trouble with this and I feel like shit. Uh, I coached myself to the block and came on, out on the other side and now I'm sharing it with you. So I'm going to explain to you what was going on and then I'm going to open my human design chart so you can see how I coach myself through the block and this is how I help my clients with blocks. And this is a very common uh, block that I'm going to tell you right now. So First, I look at the issue, what's going on. Uh, so what I wrote in my journal, I, I basically coach myself through writing in my journal. Excuse me, I get, oh, I just burped, so I just wanna say something. I'm 23 weeks pregnant, I have a five-year-old and a two and a half-year-old, so I will be pausing this recording one. They have to come in here to go to the bathroom because the other bathroom's being renovated. Uh, but I may feel out of breath, so I'll probably like go, <sighs> And I may burp sometimes. <laughs> I don't mean it. I'm just I'm praying to hear. Got a baby I'm taking up space. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's get started. So the issue was what I wrote down. I said, I get excited about a plan of action and then I don't follow through on the plan. I want to make more money and I know where the money would go and I know how I want my life to look like like and what I want the money for and yet I feel I self-sabotage myself by not taking action or I take action but just for a short period of time and then I die out so um I've been frustrated at myself for that for not launching anything and I'm afraid that when I do launch no one will buy so let me know these are common things afraid of launching and people not buying I have had several businesses and have had several failures and I've had several private clients and several clients and then I've had things that I've launched and it did not work out and that is just part of the entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial <laughs> journey okay guys it's part of it you can't be afraid of failing because all it shows you is where you need to go you know that's not the direction you need to go you need to go this way but human design really helps you understand alignment which is talked about a lot in the entrepreneurial world but alignment is really just following your strategy authority and your human design and it's so simple and so easy and so in future videos i will be talking about the strategy authority the five types going into more detail into that uh, but right now i'm showing you how uh, i coach women out of that mindset block right so another thing i want to point out is that i have a budget where i know where my money is going I know where um, for expenses, for my self-care, my massages, my chiropractic care, any many petties, and you know, being with family, doing this with my family. I know where my money's going, so it's important to have clarity on that because what you don't want, and I've had this happen in my other businesses, is my money comes in and I receive it, but I don't keep the money because I don't know where my money's going, so I end up spending more than I wanted to. So. All right, so then I go to the body graph. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the body graph and share it with you guys here. All right, so I used your genetic matrix and you can find a link down below or in my bio, depending if you're watching this on Instagram or YouTube. And it is an affiliate link just to be um, transparent, but it's a free site. But a lot of the things I'm gonna be looking at does require a paying membership. It's like $9.53 a month though. So I get like a dollar for you signing up with my affiliate link. So if you wanna dive into this, or if you decide to work with me and you wanna have your chart like available to you at all times, I just highly recommend that you 
pay the $9.53 a month and put that on your budget <laughs> as well. So, so I look at where my centers are defined and undefined. So I only have three defined centers. I'm pretty open. Um, I'm a projector, which makes up about 20% of the population or so. Uh, and I'm a pretty open projector. I only have my will heart center defined right here. My splenic center, I'm a splenic projector defined. And so I make the de decisions based on my, my, my splenic center, which again, I'll explain in the future. I might explain this video if it is in my notebook and I have my root defined. So open centers, I take on a lot of people's inspirations if I allow myself. Like I have to be very aware of where are my own inspirations, what are my own ideas, you know, um, saying things when I feel invited to say things, not questioning my purpose and direction, um, instead of putting it out into the world through cre creativity and imagination. I'll talk about that later. I'm an emotional empath. And so I take on a lot of people's emotions if I allow myself to. So I have to remember to be a screen and not a sponge for people's emotions. And I also have an open sacral. So I tend to, I have to allow myself to rest when I feel tired because I don't have this inner energy to keep going, 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 going. So, and actually pick up on a lot of people's energy, which I can burn out if I pick up on their energy and use it too much, which I used to when I used to work 16 hour days and go to school full time <laughs> and have an internship at the same time. So I was on a road for burnout in my twenties for sure. So guys, if that clap is really loud, I'm just so used to doing that. All right. So I look at the centers, but I also intuitively allow myself to just feel in into what's going on. So I looked at this and I said, okay, I have an open head with gates 63 and 64. Uh, and that is my sun and earth right here. And again, I'll explain that later, but those are two gates that are there. So they really uh, define a lot of the things, um, questions that come through my mind. So these two gates are doubt and confusion. They're called the gate of doubt and confusion. And so I look at, I know a lot of the gates by heart, but I also, you don't have to memorize everything for human design, you guys, because doctors and psychologists open up their notebooks. They open up the doctors, open up the DSM, right? That's the DSM manual, um, to look up things, psychology. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I've been at doctor's offices and they've been like, let me like look at this to see like what medication is best or something. So these are my manuals. Human Design Book by Karen Curry. You can find that on Amazon and I will put a link below. And, or my bio and Gene Keys is also what I look at to look at every gate has a shadow and two shadows and a gift. So usually many people are living in the shadows of things uh, because of preconditioning, from their childhood, from their life, from their friendships, trauma, and this life or past lives. So we want to live more in our gifts, and that's just how to be the best person we can be. So I'm overhead in Ajna, so there's confusion and doubts over everything I do, basically. Like, I have these ideas and inspirations that come to my head, and then I doubt myself. And then I'm confused on what to do first and where to get started, because there's so many coming in. So let me know if you have that experience. Like you just have so much stuff coming in, so many ideas and inspiration, and then you're like, where do I get started? What do I do right now? So that tends to happen to me, and I'm aware of that. I hope I have an open G center. This is that identity center, which is about purpose and direction and love, and I question my own direction and my own purpose instead of realizing that my superpower, one of my superpowers, is that I can see other people's directions and purposes very, very easily. So if I just take that confusion and doubt and put it towards helping others, my creativity, doing things in a new way, it gets to be so easy. And then we have open sacral and a defined will center. So I put this because I want to keep working. That's the defined will. Defined will is like the sprint in a race. 
So I have the energy to like get things done and use my resources and find new resources to get things done. But if I continue going, I will wear myself down because I have this open sacral. So I'm really meant to rest. <laughs> and I've taken a lot of stuff during the day, especially because I have two kids and being pregnant right now. I have a business and clients and a husband and a household. I take in a lot during the day. So I need to make sure that when I am working, it's towards something I really love to do and I really want to do. And that's following my strategy and authority. So, and that's why I put when I need to, I need to follow my strategy and authority to rest and what to, what I want to create, or if there's a new way to create something, or if I just need to pass it on to someone else. So I looked at those centers, right? So I didn't look at every open center. I didn't look at here. I didn't look at the emotional center and I didn't look at the throat center because I didn't feel like I need to do that for this block right here. So again, um, when I coach clients, I just, I look at what I feel I need to look at. I intuitively like let myself be guided on what I'm looking at so that I can guide them through their block. So then I reveal the root stories the stories that are holding me back. What, what, what are the stories that I'm telling myself that is holding me back? So with a defined will and root center, the will, as I mentioned, is like a sprint. And the, the root is like the marathon. It's having the energy for the long run and defined will is having the energy for the short run. So with these two energy centers, they allow me to keep going uh, in the long and short run but realizing and accepting that I have an open sacral and as long as I follow my a strategy and authority using my splenic authority, that to know when I need to create things and if there's a new way that I can create things to make it easier for myself, that I can do that. I don't need to look at other people or get any other person's approval on do, doing things differently and I'm resting when I need to rest. And that it doesn't take as much time and energy when I do things in a way that I want to do them and when I follow my strategy and authority. Because that's a, to a story I tell myself that I've got to work more, that I've got to get stuff done, that I've got to do things because I used to work those 16 hour days, guys. You know, I used to have that internship go to school full time. And I was a biology, biology and psychology double major because I wanted to be a doctor at the time. So it was like so much going on. So my whole life was a lot of stuff, activities. I was president in a lot of clubs. I just filled my plate to the brim because again, I wanted to be a doctor. I volunteered, got good grades. Like, oh my gosh, I <laughs> did so much. So I'm de deconditioning from that. And then really looking at the root energy right here is, um, to rest when the energy isn't there. I have the energy to do things, but if the energy is not there, then rest, allowing myself to rest. All right, so the next things that I did look at were some of my planets and my astrology chart. This is something that I don't do with every client. I might not do with every block that I meet for myself. In this case, I felt intuitively guided to look at it. So. I wanted to look at Jupiter, which Jupiter is the planet of philosophy, travel, and look around money. Jupiter is the planet where people, you know, you win the lottery or you just get in suddenly sudden inheritance or suddenly a big, you know, cash of money. Like, so I wanted to look at that. I wanted to look at second house and Venus because Venus is really a part of the planet, is like the planet people think of love, relationships and stuff. But the second house is ruled by Venus. So it's the material world. The second house is the money that you're receiving. So I want to look at that. And then the 10th house, which is career. And that's ruled by Saturn. So I want to look at those things as well because the 10th house is your career. And we're talking about mindset around business, around my career. So I want to take a look at that. So I looked at Jupiter. What's great about this is you can click on interactive on this drag down menu here and I can go to click on all the things and it'll give me some information on it. I still like to use my books a hundred percent, but this is a really quick, like easy way to see like, oh, that's the gate of confusion. I just mentioned you guys, that's the gate of doubts. 
So really cool stuff. So Jupiter here, okay, and I'll tell you too, I'll say filter Jupiter. I know the sign, but it'll let you know that you're in Jupiter there. All right, so Jupiter is in gate three, line four. Again, I'll explain those in subsequent videos, uh, but for me, uh, that gate means to lean towards innovation and improving using new elements, uh, seeing things like a child, because if I look, I got this information from the Gene Keys. When I look in the Gene Keys, I'll see that gate three is called through the eyes of the child. So seeing things like a child, seeing things in a new way, being like in awe, inspired by it, right? And the chance to do things in a new way. So a lot of people will have Jupiter. Like you'll see a lot of people with the, the same like, um, that planet, that gate, because Jupiter is a slow moving planet. It's, it's far away, right, you guys? Uh, so that's what my Jupiter tells me. So thinking about how that applies to money um, and how I receive a lot of money is that doing things in a new way, right? Allowing myself to receive doing things in a new way. So second house, and you'll see a pattern here, it's so interesting. Second house is Pluto is in my second house. And so I, this is, I looked at this, you can go to Astro HD Natal on the drop down menu, and you can see your astrology chart too. So I see that Pluto, this is Pluto, and it tells me that's in my second house right here. So you can see it right there, second house. All right, so Pluto is in my second house and it's in gate 44. Tells me right there, tell, tells me right there to line one. So with that, I looked at gate 44 in my handy dandy gene keys. And you can also look at, you can take a look at the interactive and see what gate 44 is. So a whole generation of us, have Pluto and Gate 44. Again, very slow moving planet, very far away. So you can see that my, there's both, both of the numbers are the same here. These are very slow moving planets. So this is three months before you're born and this is when you're born. So the planet didn't really move much, <laughs> right? Because it is a slow moving planet. So with this one, the gift is teamwork. This tells the jinkies here, this will tell you the two shadows. This tells you the shadow, the overall shadow, and then the two shadows, distrustfulness. That's the two shadows and misjudging that people are usually in in this gate, and you'll see it in our society. Um, and really going towards teamwork. And then this one is like the it's it's like the enlightened state. <laughs> it's like the Buddha of it all. So as a human being, I'm just aiming for this right now. <laughs> so it's teamwork, working together as a team, not comparing yourself to anyone, but realizing that the work you're doing, even if you're in the same niche. So even if you and I are both in motherhood and business or in health and you know, you're looking at other people who are in health or you're looking at other people who teach human design or you're looking at other people who are in whatever niche you are, it doesn't mean that there's competition. It just means it's an opportunity, opportunity to collaborate, collaborate, or even expand your own awareness and thinking, right? So there's no need to have the, the comparison and competition, but just realizing that like, if you work together as a team, you can accomplish so much more, right? So then I looked at my Venus, and my Venus is right here. Venus is super easy because it's also in gate 64, just like my mind. So it's the gate of confusion. So for my Venus, really, it's about imagination, right? Doing things in a new way. Doesn't that sound familiar <laughs> that I haven't seen before? Um, instead of looking how others are doing it, doing it my way. 
and not imitating. And you see this a lot in the entrepreneurial, especially the coaching world, is that people hire coaches. They hire someone to help them execute a business plan or to get through mindsets, to get through blocks. And what do they do? They take that coach's system and they are using it on all of their clients because they're imitating what they're doing. So you see it all the time. It's just this imitation over and over when, oh my gosh, like, again, seeing things that Jupiter, seeing things through a child's eyes in a different way, right? And having that imagination and the imagination is just doing things in ways that are completely out of the box, which is so funny because I hear a lot of clients saying, I want to like be out of the box. I want to be different. But most people in general are imitating not just in their business, but also with parenting, just doing what their parents did, right? Raising their kids, how their parents raised their kids. I mean, their parents raised them. Um, teachers, teaching how they were taught, right? Instead of doing things in a, in a new, brand new way. Can you imagine that? Imagination. So then I looked at Saturn. So again, um, let's go back to Venus. Uh, we talked about my second house. So that's the material world. That's where the only thing I have in my second house is Pluto. That's why I looked at my astro astrology chart. The only thing that's in there is Pluto. And so it's just really about doing things as a team. Uh, so if I work with others, I can receive more compensation, right? Is that crazy? Like if I allow myself to collaborate with others, which is part of my profile too, as a line two and four, you guys, it's crazy looking at this stuff. So Venus is, was in my, um, second house as well, right? No, no, no. Yes. Let me see. I think that's why I, well, I spoke about Venus because it, it's ruled by the second house. Well, it rules the second house, but also when I look at here, is Venus in my second house? Where's Venus? Venus, Venus, Venus. No, it's my 12th house, actually. So I just looked at Venus because it, it rules the material world. So, I mean, it rules the second house. So I wanted to take a look at that. So then I'm going to look at Saturn, which rules the 10th house. So I'm going to look at that. And so Saturn, I'm going to go back here and see Saturn is in gate five, all right? So when I looked at the gene keys here, you'll see that impatience is the overall shadow of um, that gate, very much in our society, you can say, right? Pessimism. <laughs> and patience is the gift of it, which sounds so simple, but most of society does not have patience down. If you, <laughs> I'm sure you can agree with me on that. So having patience, trusting that it's all going to come to fruition and work out in my favor in divine timing. So I looked at Saturn, again, Saturn rules the 10th house. So thinking about, about my career, having patience with it, showing up, being creative, doing things in a new way and knowing that it's all going to work out that everything's going to work out and it's going to be in the perfect timing. So then I looked at 10th house. Finally, lastly, again, I do this very intuitively, but 10th house was, is the house of career. So I look at my 10th house and I see that I have a couple things there. My mid heaven is there. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about that right now, but really, uh, what I want to look at is that my Chiron is in my 10th house. Okay. So my Chiron is in my 10th house. The Chiron is called the wounded healer. It's really what we are learning in this lifetime and healing to help others with. So like, as we're learning it, we're helping others with it as well. So Chiron is in gate 12. Okay. Line six. And it's also in Gemini. And I know I didn't talk about signs here really, but Gemini is a sign of communication. So uh, here I have as communication <laughs> as one as my wounded healer, right? In the 10th house around my career. <laughs> so uh, being authentic, which is so funny. I talk about authenticity a lot, being yourself and looking through all of this. How many times have I said doing things in a new way, doing things your own way, being authentic, being yourself. 
um, and knowing what is what and who is healthy for me and trusting in how I communicate and being authentic with my communication. The 12th key, 12th gene key talks, it's called pure heart. That's what that whole gene key is called. Again, I go through my gene keys book. I'm like gate 12 <laughs> and gate 12 is called a pure heart right there. So it's just about being pure of heart, just doing things that come from my heart. And you won't see it in the interactive, but you can see Chiron, client chart and Chiron. So you can actually just see the chart right there. Or you can go to the quantum, which is how you've seen, seen the chart here. This is my Chiron, K12, tells me right there. So, and it's also just being a model on authenticity because line six is being the model, being the influencer. So I didn't talk about the lines a lot here, but just being that, that light, right? Like being that authenticity and just that being authentically me and communicating that with my audience so that they can see that they can do it too. They can be themselves and still make money, right? So especially after becoming a mom, like when so many women lose themselves, they're like, I'm a mom. I don't know who I am anymore. I don't know what I love anymore. And so just being you, you being you, you can make money being you. <laughs> so the next step is, there's only like a couple more steps, is to show you the truth and align to type strategy and authority. So with this, uh, I write, I basically write out everything that I said, but I put it together, right? So I wrote out, allowing yourself to do things in a new way. Because how many times have you, did you see the pattern? Like Jupiter, innovation, childlike eyes, new way. You know, Pluto was teamwork, not comparing, right? Um, Venus, doing things your way. <laughs> uh, Saturn, just having the patience, right? And the new way is going to work. And so, and then 10,000 was about that communication around being authentic doing things my way, <laughs> like being real. So there's like a really big theme on like doing things my own way. So when others do things, this is what I wrote down, when others do things in your niche, let yourself teach it and show it differently and not comparing it to that person. Um, really what I see what's holding you back is comparison and wanting to imitate how people do things because you see how successful they are in the way they do things, but allowing yourself and you know, allowing your ideas and any doubts to be projected into your creativity and into your action and doing things a new way. Imagination and innovation. I also, I didn't talk about my North node. That's this right here. Let me go back to interactive. My North node had a little bit to do with it as well. North node is your purpose and direction. So with the North node, it's, I, I looked to hear this again, this is very intuitive as well. So there's a lot around my North node, but I looked here and it said perfection of action through uncontri uncontrived and spontaneous nature. So what I thought is that my results come from just having fun and just doing things. Just like, I do things from my heart and I just do them and then like it works out. So also trusting my splenic authority. I am a splenic projector. That's my authority. Uh, we'll go to quantum here, but that's my authority. And you'll see authority here. Do, do, do. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. All right, so I went to client chart and it's, you'll see here, splenic. Because it, it won't always say it in front of, not for this site in front of your type. Uh, it's just that like, it does for mine. <laughs> um, for generator, I'll say like pure generator sometimes. And so you're like, what is that? So splenic authority, all right? So for splenic authority, it's just getting a yes on something. Like I get the yes, by only it'll only tell me one time like like do i want water 
yes and if asked again it's not going to tell me the answer <laughs> like it's going to just be doubts and fears and so recognizing for myself that when I receive the yes to do things in a new way to just trust that with sacral authority which is a yes and no type of authority as well you'll get the yes over and over you'll get the no over and over it's like do I want coffee no do I want coffee no do I want coffee no I'll ask and it'll be like, no. And it's like, do I have coffee? And it's like, we already told you. <laughs> we already told you. We told you. So you need to listen. Um, so really recognizing that if I question something over and over and over again, I had I like, I got this idea to do things a new way. And I question, I'm like, I receive the yes, but I'm doubting because that is the shadow of the splenic projector. I mean, the splenic authority is that doubt comes right after the yes answer. So if I doubt something and if I'm doubting it and if I'm asking myself, but what if, you know, what if I should do it? Should I do it? What if it doesn't work out? It, I got the yes answer because fear is my sign that I received the yes answer. So just for your cleaning authorities, if you have doubt or fear, you're constantly questioning something after you received your answer, it's because it was a yes. Because if it was a no, you wouldn't be thinking about it anymore. It wouldn't be, there would be no doubt, there'd be no questioning, there'd be no confusion around it. And that doesn't really have to do with the gates, that's just that splenic authority, that splenic energy. So, and also um, realizing that be the lighthouse, that's being a projector, is very much being the lighthouse. Uh, but looking at everything I'm looking at, my type, being a projector, my, being the splenic projector, be the lighthouse, right? Because then when I'm in the lighthouse, when I'm doing things that I love, when I'm showing up in a way that I love, when I'm showing up in new innovative ways and I'm having fun with it, I'll get the invitations. I'll get the recognition. Money will come through. It's just how I work. So I also want to point out, and you know, I didn't talk about these things, but these aspects of the chart, but I do look at it if I feel guided to look at it and my motivation is fear and with fear and motivation it's really about like wanting to save up wanting to you know hoard things that the shadow side could be like oh i want to keep my money i don't want to like spend my money uh but just having a, a savings plan would be really great for me to have right because then i'll feel more i'll feel more um secured so it's really about security and safety and so what's going to make me feel more secure and safe? Yeah, having a savings plan would really be great. Um, and having any extra resources that I feel guided to have to make me feel safe, right? Um, it could be my environment. It could be, you know, having a virtual assistant. It could be anything. You know, what do I need to feel safe in my environment? Um, and I, I put that, what do you need to feel safe? So the last thing, last but not least, is making the commitment and just having fun living my design and having grace as I decondition all these things, just, you know, recognizing I'm, I, I'm most likely will be living in the shadow here and there, but oh, I'm living in the shadow, recognizing like, oh, I'm imitating. I'm doing things people like how people are doing. I'm keep scrolling and looking how people are doing things. Um, and I'm doubting myself. Project that outward into creativity, into my business. So I put my new standard is not looking at what others are doing and doing whatever way i have ideas on especially when they feel new like especially when they feel new especially when they feel out of the box listening to my splenic authority on creating things a new way and resting when i need to and accepting the rest not feeling bad for resting not being like oh i'm resting i just watched you know four episodes of schitt's creek <laughs> in a row you know of the good plays oh my gosh like did i just watch the whole season of Orange and new black this week it's cool like allow myself to rest when I feel like I need to rest and then playing and seeing things in a new way. I always say that in this lifetime, I really decided that I want to have lots of kids because I'm going to have like three or four kids because they see things in a new way. They have such imagination. They have no bounds. Boundlessness is actually the, um, it's, it's the Buddhahood or whatever of one of the gene keys. I forgot which one, but there's no bounds. They're just like doing things. <laughs> they're just doing things and they're just like, mm, I don't have any limits, right? So 
um, that was that is how I work through a block with a client. So you can see that it took, you know, this is even explaining it to you guys. It took about, you know, what is it? 30, 45 minutes. I don't know where we're on right now. Let me stop screen share, but it took a little time. And, but now I realize like what I'm doing, what was holding me back and what's the new truth and how I'm going to commit to those standards. Right. And so I help clients do that. And then when committing to that new standard, right, you didn't see a plan of action there because this is not a goal setting session, a human design goal setting session. I have a goal setting session and I did that as well. So for myself, so I will be sharing that it's in, in another video and that is just different sessions. So I do, I can either have a single session with someone who's like, I have a mindset block and like, I have something that's holding me back. Like I need help with that and just focusing on the mindset what what is it what's going on okay cool now you can go forward knowing what what the hell was going on right or a goal setting session where it's like you know i kind of have an idea about what's going on but i need a plan of action like i need to like get my shit done i need like like a plan to reach my goals and so i help my clients with that as well a lot of times i'll help them with both <laughs> we're doing a mindset session and we're doing a goal setting session because if you're not reaching your goals, it's usually because there's a mindset thing there. There's something there. There's something going on that is not allowing you to reach your goals. But sometimes it is that you have all these ideas and inspirations and a big vision of what you want to do. But it's like, how do I get this stuff done right now? Right? So I help with that as well. So I offer both sessions. I offer single sessions. So the mindset, human design mindset session for 111s, and that's up to 60 minutes of time and this is how it goes basically or you can have the coaching goal setting session with human design for 111 as well or you can save a little bit of money and do both sessions for 177 so i have a discount with that instead of being 222 right doing both sessions it's 177 to have a dual session where we look at your mindset what's going on and then we go to your goal setting okay so uh yeah so excited about what's going on in here <laughs> for my goal setting so i guess i'm getting about like doing shit so all right if you have any questions at all please put it in the comments below if you're watching on igtv or on youtube um or you can feel free to um message me on instagram i'm there a lot I, again i'm at the i am the ancestor mom you see it in the link in my bio or in the description box below depending on where you're watching and or this might be on my podcast so you might be hearing the audio and it'll, it'll be all the information will be where it needs to be you guys so uh let me know if you have any questions and have a beautiful day and i hope that you go out in the world and do things a new way and know that everything's happening in your favor um as long as you just go do it <laughs> and have trust and faith in yourself i love y'all and have a oh also, if you want to schedule any of the sessions, that's also going to be in the link in my bio. You can DM me or OB in the description box somewhere <laughs> down in YouTube or up there in, in my podcast. All right. Um, and the podcast is The Ancestor Bomb. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm like a little like getting jelly brain here. So I will see y'all in my next video. Make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out. All right, bye.